what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? When Sam Smith died in his modest home on the east side of Indianapolis, he died a man who not long before had swallowed his pride and made a phone call to ask for gas money. He died a man who had to make a call to ask for help with funeral expenses for his daughter. He died a man who was an American Basketball Association pioneer who blazed the trail for what the NBA is today. But basketball ended for Sam. After winning an ABA championship with the Utah Stars, he got a job as a security supervisor at the Ford Assembly Plant in Indianapolis. Years passed, times got harder, more years passed. At Sam's 50th reunion for the Kentucky Wesleyan NCAA Division II championship approach five years ago, he called the Dropping Dimes Foundation, which helps struggling ABA players and their families. Sam didn't have the money to get to his reunion, he told Dropping Dimes CEO founder Scott Tarter. He needed a loan and insisted it be $250. Dropping Dimes gave him the money and told him it was a gift, not a loan. Sam waited, hoping he wouldn't have to make another call to Dropping Dimes hoping for the $2,000 a month pension he said he was owed by the NBA for his five years playing in the ABA, which merged with the NBA in 1976. Two years later, Sam had to make another call. His daughter had died and left her five-year-old son who had autism to be taken care of by Sam and his wife, Helen. Dropping Dime stepped in again to assist in Sam's expenses. On May 18th, Sam died at the age of 79 years old. The money, the pension, never came from the NBA. Still waiting on that $2,000. Now, Sam wanted to do something spectacular, something special for those ABA players and NBA players who still haven't been compensated. He wanted to take a picture on his deathbed, which he did, of him and the state that he was in. Not for himself, but to help those guys who were still in need. Those guys who are still waiting. He wanted to do something to put the pressure on the NBA to pay up. A lot of these guys who used to play in the league, they're homeless. They are on drugs. They're in bad shape. Sam said he was thankful that at least he had health care. He never got the 2000, but at least he had health care from Ford. Good luck on Ford's behalf. Before I go any further, I have to salute Dropping Dimes because they do the work while others talk about doing the work. Man, another round of applause for Sam Smith. Even on his deathbed, he was thinking about others. He knew it was too late for him and he would never sit down from the NBA. But he rolled for those who are still trying to collect. You know, when I read this story, it reminded me of the story of so many people in the music industry. So many people that played football, that played baseball. So many people that got that money, that fast money, that big money, 
who didn't have the, I would say, the expertise to take care of that money. Didn't have good people around them to help them take care of that. I would have had plenty of people around them that would help them spend the money. But take care of that money, manage that money correctly to make sure that they didn't die broke, didn't die homeless, didn't die a beggar. No, 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 not so much. But let me tell you, family, as dirty as the NBA is, as dirty as the music industry is, as dirty as NFL is, because they still owe a lot of players right now. NFL owe a lot of players with their CTE. As dirty as they are, at the end of the day, fam, when you make that kind of money, you've been in the league five years, and then we're talking about the NBA, and you played in the ABA several years, you still made more money than the average person made in a lifetime you can make in one year. Oftentimes you make that money in one year that the average person couldn't make in a lifetime. That's on you. It's on you to get your money. I'm not saying that they don't still owe. Now if they owe you, they owe you, they owe you. But at the end of the day, you can't look for these people to take care of you. You got to know at the end of the day, you're on your own. And if you make a certain amount of money, you got to See, when I was getting my money, I was getting my money like I might not get no more money. You got to have that kind of mentality. But see, people that make that quick money, even just like in the dope game, people that make that fast money, they always think that they can just do it again. If they run out, they just do it again. You run out of money that you made from that hit song, you just think you can write another hit and it'll happen again. You run out of money from this year, that you blew all the money from this year, you always think you can just go out and just do whatever you did the last time to make that money again. And things change, situations change, your influence change, your appeal changes. People move on oftentimes. So when you get that money, you gotta act like you ain't gonna see no more money. And I remember thinking that $100,000 was a good threshold for me to ever, never be broke again. Didn't work out like that, but I just felt like, man, if you have an opportunity to get six figures ever, or like to have six figures at one time, you should be able to take that $100,000 and turn it into a million. Take that million, turn it into two, and so on and so on and so on. Don't work like that all the time, but I'm just saying, like, if you get that kind of money, you can't be mad if you blow your part, the money that you did. Let's say they owed you a million, but you collected 100000 You couldn't take $100,000, I'm not saying you got $100,000 over time. I'm saying at one point, you got $100,000, you had $100,000 at one time. You couldn't take $100,000 and make something pop. Yeah, fam. At some point, we got to put it on ourselves. And I'm going to tell you something, fam. As much as it's, it's heartbreaking to see these artists go through hardship, financial hardship. I got to tell you, fam, at the end of the day, it's on that artist. I've seen it happen way too many times. I know a lot of these guys personally. And many of them, I warned them. I used to, I used to try to put them on game. Like, man, do it like this. You know, uh, link up with this person right here. You, you know, talk to this person more and they wouldn't even pick up the phone and make the call. So at the end of the day, you're responsible for yourself. Yeah, what the NBA did to Sam was dirty, but there were some things that he could have done differently. Five years in the league, fam, I don't care what year it was. You got to... Consider inflation. Consider what, what the rate was at that time. How much, how much let's say he only got $10,000 a year. How much money was $10,000 in, in the 60s, you know, in the 50s? You understand what I'm saying? How much money was that? That's a lot of money, right? So uh, 
bad thing, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's horrible that, that people have to go through that, you know, especially people who have made significant contributions. But at the end of the day, fam, I'm telling you, you got to take care of yourself. Don't look for these companies to take care of you. Don't look for these corporations to look out for you. You got to look out for yourself. And if you are like a family member of any of these people that get on like that, if, it, if there's anything that you can do to assist them, any information you can give them, don't be afraid to push that information in front of them. Don't just be sitting back thinking, well, you know, who am I? I'm nobody. They're a big celebrity. They're not going to listen to me. Put it out there anyway, fam. You'd be surprised because most celebrities are used to yes men, yes women. And when they get somebody who will give them the information respectfully, you'd be surprised how often they're willing to listen. R.I.P. Sam Smith. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?